Greetings, members, one and all of the Salivation Nation. Gold and silver are soaring on this election day. Massive moves over 2% for both metals, and they don't seem to care what the Fed is doing or what they're going to do in the future. And could this be a turning point for gold and silver? We will find out as we explore. Gold and silver climbed up dramatically today. Gold is actually up over 2.2%, up $37.50 as I record this video to $1,714 in the ask price. Silver is up over 50 cents today, up over 2.6%, climbing up to $21.44. Gold to silver ratio has now narrowed once again to just above 80. There's where the metals are today on this election day. And nobody's really talking about the Federal Reserve and what they're going to do or what they've done just recently. Uh, the metals have pretty much uh, surpassed and passed by that day when they raised the rates and ignored it for the most part and now have climbed up solidly above uh, some resistance levels that we saw before. If you enjoy videos like this where I talk about the news of precious metals, I hope you will consider pressing that thumbs up button and maybe subscribing to, to the channel. It does help. Your comments and your thumbs up do help, and I appreciate every single one of you. I am trying to expand the audience. I'm working like hell to try to get more videos and great content out to you guys. So please help me spread the message out there. So here's where we are at on this election day. I'm be referencing an article here from Kitco News. Talks about what's going on in the markets. One of the big things is the crypto sphere is having an effect here in the markets today. Gold and silver prices are sharply up. And we saw gold hit this four-week high and trading now back above $1,700. Silver saw a more than a four-month high today. The precious metals are benefiting from heavy short covering in the futures markets, um, perceived bargain hunting um, in the cash markets, and even some safe haven demand as the cryptocurrency markets are selling off. We saw a pretty big drop in Bitcoin to below 19000 In fact, right now, Bitcoin is sitting at $18,427 per Bitcoin. That's an 11% drop. So you think about it. You know, where do people go for the ultimate safe haven? It is gold and silver. And that's what we're seeing today, folks. Gold and silver are now starting to shine as they really always have been a precious metals or a safe haven. Now, what's, what's behind this? And what's going on uh, with this move? A lot of people are getting out of the paper markets and they're looking at more physical silver and gold. I've talked about that in prior videos. And I think that is part of what's driving premiums. And now I think it's part of what's driving, at least to some extent, spot price. Uh, but again, you know, moves in the other direction could occur and be prepared for it. Rumors are swirling in the crypto markets regarding one exchange halting withdrawals. I think it's got something to do with Binance as well, too, from what I saw from a blurb that came through. And it's apparently spooked all of the crypto markets especially Bitcoin, but you know, Ethereum dropped very heavily as well too. So did XRP and some of these others. Uh, but uh, yes, and so what's happening? It's boosting safe haven demand for gold and silver. Gold prices have risen 62% over the time, over six months uh, following the midterm uh, U.S. elections and with a medium return of 2% according to a World Gold Council report. Uh, using data going back to 1970. You know, the election being today, I think, is also playing, uh, you know, some effect on markets. <clears throat> we saw the overall stock market, stock market up earlier today, but nonetheless, there's a lot of uncertainty. You know, there's a lot of hope for some that we could see a, a balance of power shift, at least in Congress, um, with both houses. But, you know, we'll see. But a lot of unknowns that are still there for the election. As I record this video, we're not sure exactly 
you know, what the balance of power is going to be. A lot of people think that Republicans will at least take control of the House, though. Uh, traders and investors are increasingly concerned about rising COVID cases in China. You know, <clears throat> that's it. China is continuing to deal with that. But they're the world's largest second economy, the second largest economy in the world. Reports said that the number of new cases climbed above 7,500 Monday, which is the highest since May. You know, you remember there was talk that they may ease restrictions by, you know, April or May of next year. And that sent prices going up for gold and silver, too. And that was on Friday. You know, a lot happens. And every single day, there's news that comes out that can affect the markets. Um, and that actually could lead to less demand for silver. And we could see silver prices fall because of that. You never know. Uh, broker SP Angel reports China is probably two years behind the West in its war with COVID infections. Chinese manufacturers gained market share in global markets when the West locked down. The nation now risk losing money overseas uh, companies as the risk of ongoing lockdowns. Locking in workers risk their human rights. The key markets uh, today see the U.S. dollar index lower after losing overnight gains. And that's another thing, too, in bond yields as well. Uh, the U.S. Treasury note now is yielding around 4%. So we'll see what happens. And the U.S. will get its next report card on the inflation fight Tuesday with the release of the Consumer Price Index report for October, which is seen and coming up 7.9% year on year compared to the 8.2% rise seen in the September report. But and so that may seem to be good on the surface with a uh, with a report lower number. But keep in mind that it was around this time last year when we saw the uh, the rates rise dramatically CPI uh, year over year. So we're going to be doubling up on that which means, or not doubling up, but stacking up on top of that. So if you look at a, <clears throat> like, like, say, for instance, um, last year inflation was, uh, let's just say as a hypothetical, uh, last year that inflation was at uh, 3%, and then you see an 8% number. Uh, well, that's pretty bad. But then let's say the next month uh, inflation is at 6%, and then you have a 7%, that's worse because you're stacked up upon what was already a high month last year at this time. So 7.9 is not gonna be that big of a drop. That's what their expectations are. Doesn't necessarily mean that it will be that low. It may be 8.1 or 8 or 8% 8 flat. You just don't know. We'll see where it goes out. But nonetheless, gold and silver are shining today. Um, certainly up and starting to consistently. We did see uh, very recently in, our, in the market watch that I did on Sunday night, we saw the numbers pull back somewhat, but not a whole lot, although it's a fairly dramatic move at the start of the night. But uh, yesterday we saw the somewhat of a recovery and the metals were still up. Uh, but now we are seeing and witnessing the price movements in a up positive direction over 2%. For both gold and silver. By the way, platinum and palladium are also both up um, over 1% today. Uh, rhodium is actually down uh, over 1%. That's pretty um, pretty remarkable to see that uh, working against the other platinum group metals. Uh, but regardless, in any of these circumstances and cases, nothing, not a word is mentioned about what the Fed is has done or is going to do. Um, in other words, we may get to a point very soon, folks, we're going to keep an eye on it where the metals will react in spite of what the Fed does or not even regarding it because the Fed really isn't having that much effect on inflation. When the metals markets ignore what the Fed does uh, on a day-to-day, week-to-week basis, then you know that more than likely they're going to continue to go north. On a technical front, we are waiting to see what some technical an anal analysts say about uh, the move once silver hits this uh, critical point of $21 and change, if it will sustain that and continue to climb up to $28. Um, that is something we are watching. And some say it'll be smooth sailing from here from a technical standpoint. Uh, there'll be other things that could certainly uh, push 
um, uh, uh, you know, where it would be going with the wind on its way up with these other factors that we're that are looking at here. Uh, I think politically that's going to have a, an effect too, where the elections go. Um, um, and we're going to be watching those closely to see how the markets react and how the precious metals react as well. So very, very interesting indeed. I think a sign we're seeing right now early on is that the stock market being up um, means that um, probably they're figuring the Republicans uh, may take, uh, take control of at least one, if not both, houses, or both chambers. Uh, the Dow Jones Industrials is up over 1%, up 333 points. The NASDAQ is up a half a percentage point, up 51 points. And the S&P is up 21 points as well. But again, that dollar index is hurting uh, down uh, almost just over a half a percentage point. And we're seeing other markets mostly up overall, including the New York Stock Exchange, the Nikkei, and all of these others are up as well. Very interesting indeed. Well, it's an exciting time to see the metals start to pop here. Will it stick? That's the question. We don't know. Uh, stay tuned. We'll find out. We're going to be watching these closely. I hope you found this video insightful. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below as we watch gold and we watch silver in the coming days here. Let me know what your thoughts are. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch this video and encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.